So in today's video, we're going to talk about preparation of competent cells using electroporation and heat shock transformation methods. Transfection is the process of introducing nucleic acids into cells by non-viral methods. Transformation is the process used in case of transfer particles. Both techniques depend on the type of host or vector systems. Some difference between both is that the transformation is based in the introduction of a gene into a prokaryotic cell and it results in heritable alteration in genes, whereas transfection is usually called the intraeukaryotic cell and can result in either temporary expression or permanent changes in genes. There are many different methods to transform cells. However, not every method can be applied to both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Electroporation and sun commonly use. It's a physical transfection method that consists in the application of electrical pulses to create temporary pores in the cell membrane. It can be used in bacteria and eukaryotic cells, and it is the most efficient technique because it provides an efficiency transformation of about 1 by 10 A transformed cells per microgram plasmid. Sun operation can also be used as a transfection mechanism and it's an annotated cell membrane permeabilization or induction of membrane pores using ultrasound. Five things to consider when selecting a transformation method are the method through which the cells became competent. If the cells became competent by adding salts, electroporation equipment will damage the cells, making heat shock transformation the best option. Transformation efficiency is important since electroporation has an efficiency around 10 to the 8th and chemical transformation has a maximum efficiency of 10 to the 6th. The cell membrane and wall composition are important since some, since some components can be resistant to certain transformation methods. The size of the plasmid that will be introduced into the bacteria and the capacity of the cells to resist the damage are important. Other transformation methods are colony to lung, which consists in a single fresh colony of plasmid containing donor strain that is picked up and suspended in 75% ethanol. Then it's resuspended in calcium chloride and freezed to obtain a plasmid containing cell lysis. The recipient is scraped from the LB plate and directly resuspended in the plasmid containing the lysis transformation. Place transformation is the method that consists in preparing a culture of receptor bacteria incubating it at 37 degrees overnight with shake aiken 200 rpms afterwards they will be translated into a new medium and incubated again at 37 degrees for two or three hours one milliliter of the culture must be centrifugated and resuspended in lb medium mixed with 10 nanograms of plasmid and finally spatulated in cold plate calcium some methods for the transfection of eukaryotic cells include the following. Bioballistics, which is a mechanic method that works like a gene canyon. DNA is grabbed in gold or tungsten particles and then it is deposed in a machine that is compressed air in to introduce the pellet into the cells. The use of Agrobacterium sp. This method uses a natural mechanism of virulence of the bacteria to induce either tumors or hairy roots in its plants. By altering the information in the TI or RI plasmid, it is possible to obtain interest products in plants. The team obtained 25 colonies grown by the chemical method and zero colonies by electroporation method when performing the calculus of the transformation efficiency of bacteria and efficiency of entry CFU per micrograms, while for the electroporation method, the efficiency was zero. Transformation is a process where a cell is altered so that it acquires and expresses genetic material located in the surrounding environment. In chemical transformation, exogenous DNA incorporation in bacterial cells is increased substantially by the presence of salts that help neutralize the negative charges in the phosphates. During chemical transformation, the cells are heat shocked, which increases the membrane permeability because it helps to open the pores so the plasmid DNA from the surroundings can enter the cell. Electroporation, on the other hand, is a method based on the use of electrical pulse. The cells and the DNA are introduced in a conductive solution and an electrical circuit is closed around the mixture. An electrical pulse is then delivered for a few milliseconds or microseconds. The cell membrane is disturbed by the electrical pulse, resulting in the formation of temporary pores. Although every transformation requires high-quality plasmids, the samples may differ in salt content depending on the method. For electroporation, DNA must be in a low ionic strength buffer like TE buffer or biology grade water. If the sample is contaminated with salts, it can cause an electric arc 
damaging both the sample and the machine. For chemical transformation, on the other hand, it is not as important to have a completely salt-free sample since the method does not involve charges. The efficiency obtained by the pin was very low compared to the efficiency of commercial cells. Excellent preparation of competent cells delivers approximately 10 by 8 colonies per microgram of plasmid to transform, and commercial cells could have an efficiency of up to 10 by 10, so comparing it with the efficiency of 5 by 10 by 3, which was the one obtained in practice using the chemical method, was very low. Moreover, the transformation by the electroporation method of colony, no colony was obtained. So the efficiency was zero, so it would be rectified if the protocol steps were performed correctly. To transform supercooled plasmid, a transformation efficiency of 1 times 6 CFUs per microgram of plasmid is required. For the transformation of ligation, an efficiency of at least 1 times 9 CFUs per microgram of plasmid is required also. According to the experiment results, these competent cells are not suitable to transform a supercoiled plasmid or a ligation product. The electroporation transformation efficiency was zero. This could have happened because the cells reached the bottom of the electroporation cubit and the electric pulse didn't affect the bacteria. The use of the thinner micropipet tips could help to deposit the sample at the bottom of the electroporation cubit. It is also possible that the recovery time adjustment to fit the class times didn't allow the cells to start synthesizing the recently acquired genes, so ampicillin resistance was not activated and the cells died. Also, a longer recovery time in the shaker after the heat shock could result in a higher transformation efficiency. Finally, the preparation of competent cells requires a strict following of the steps of the protocol in order to ensure the progress and success of the further steps of the experiment.